Good afternoon and welcome to the Wealth of Advice market update on Sunday the 14th of February 2021. Wealth of Advice had a uh, seminar at the Ramside Hotel um, a year ago this week. Um, we are having a webinar which is going to be done on the 5th of March. Obviously we can't invite people to a physical location yet. Uh, we would love to do so but it has to be an online webinar. Uh, we have sent out invitations so far for that. We've gotten a good response rate so far. We will be sending a reminder in the next few days. It will be very easy to join. It will just be clicking on a link and then a web page will open and you'll be able to watch it on there. So anyone who, who, who uses this uh, YouTube channel to, to view us, uh, it will be a similar sort of experience for you. Uh, we've got various fund man management groups already agreeing to record videos so you'll see the fund managers answering questions that we've put to them. Uh, hopefully everyone finds it informative and useful and the key theme of it is going to be how we look forward from here and what the future may look like for your pensions and investments in the future. It's almost a year now since coronavirus really took over world news and caused all the problems in the stock markets uh, towards the end of February of last year. We're now thankfully getting to a point where we can see light at the end of the tunnel in respect of how the world looks to emerge from coronavirus. It was uh, around about October of last year when we started to see client portfolios get back above where they were pre-crash, so to speak. Um, and then certainly as the vaccine news rolled out towards the end of the year, all clients' valuations have gone up, which is nice. Every client that we're having an annual review with right now is looking at investment returns, which over the last 12 months are positive. Obviously, some higher than others, depending on how they're invested and the level of risk, uh, investment risk that they're being exposed to. Um, so again, over the last few weeks, like in previous weeks, we've spoken to many fund managers, and the theme that's coming through is that we do have reasons to be cheerful, and it's reasons to be cheerful if this doesn't happen, if that doesn't go wrong. So as long as we stay on this path that we're on, then hopefully you're going to start to see the restrictions that we currently face start to be relaxed as we get into March and April. I know Boris is going to come out and give an update on that very, very soon. Uh, but the reasons to be cheerful is quite simply, 85% uh, of the deaths from COVID are from the top four priority groups that are currently being vaccinated. The forecast at the beginning of the year that we'd have all these people vaccinated by the 15th of, Jan uh, 15th of February was scoffed at by a lot of people, but we're there, we've done it. As you can see from the graph we're putting on the screen now, you can see um, the number of people who have been vaccinated so far. So the next month is going to be very, very crucial for the UK. We need to continue to get the vaccine rollout going. Um, and if that happens, the stock market should rise on the back of it because they will see, as I say, green lights start to happen, the fact that the world will start to emerge from this lockdown. And if the UK can um, get a march on the rest of the world because our economy might, be coming, uh, might open sooner with us uh, vaccinating more people, then surely the UK stock market should do very well. Uh, so hopefully by April, all of the main priority groups will be vaccinated and we believe that by the end of April, that would prevent 99% of the deaths that COVID causes um, to be sort of vaccinated. And hopefully, as I say, barring any new strains that could come along and, and derail any of this, um, we should be through the worst of it then. Obviously for the UK to be successful, we need the rest of the world to be successful. So it'll be interesting to see what happens in Europe and in the US with their vaccine rollout. But certainly at this stage, all of the fund managers who we're talking to who have UK-based investments saying it's absolutely fantastic that the UK has put themselves in this position where we're, where we're going to be very, very uh, ahead of the curve, so to speak, with more people vaccinated. So that's definitely good. Fund managers who we spoke to as well are also pretty optimistic about the fact that um, you watching this today, the UK consumer, are sitting on roughly £150 billion of cash that was not spent over the last 12 months. So whilst you will have heard and read stories, I'm sure that people are ordering more from Amazon, Just Eat, all these sorts of uh, online technology apps and are spending money somehow, the fact of the matter is because we're in a lockdown situation, we're just not spending anywhere near as much as we were previously. So this £150 billion of surplus savings is sitting somewhere and again, the hope and the belief is that once we come out of lockdown, as we get into the summer months, the UK economy could be like a coiled spring that just bounces back and everybody's out there spending money again. If that's the case, GDP is expected to grow between at least 6 to 7% over the next 18 months. That's fantastic to see an economy like ours grow so, so much. Um, you might see inflation come back. 
inflation is not such a bad thing at certain levels obviously the, the government will be keeping an eye on that uh, but there's definite UK industries that could benefit from this uh, and we're, we're going to keep a close eye on it so when you do look at your portfolios and you look at the performance over the last year or two you might look at the UK and say yes it's definitely been an underperformer but hopefully with everything that we've got going on you could see the UK surge ahead and that's certainly what we are optimistic about right now. Whilst it is okay to be optimistic and look uh, for what could be coming as we come out of um, this current lockdown situation if the vaccine proves to be successful. The graph that you'll see now which shows the market indices performance year to date does show that the market is still very paranoid about bad news. As you can see market surged ahead at the beginning of the year the UK uh, market outperforming all the other markets by a country mile. Then there was concern about these new strains and the variant of COVID and how that might affect world economies. And as you can see there, a lot of the growth that was achieved at the beginning of the month fell away. Got to the end of January and the UK market went from being the best performer market to just on average with the, with the other two that were showing there, the MSCI World Index and the S&P, which is the American Index. And then as we've gone into February, you can see those other two markets have continued to grow and the UK has lagged behind a little bit, which again I think is a little bit strange. So yes, it might be strange that the UK market has fallen behind in the last few weeks, but again over the last 12 months we're still lagging behind those other main indices. Any client who has a balanced portfolio is getting positive returns overall, but it is the UK that lags behind, as you can see from this graph, over one year and still over three years. So from January onwards we've been outside of the European Union. Yes, we'd known about this for a couple of years leading up, but we had all the uncertainty about a no-deal Brexit happening. After January, again, there was still uncertainty about how everything would knit together. Yes, there's been concern about what's going to happen across the borders, how we uh, transport food and how the ferries and, and other sort of freight happens. But we're starting to hear now that a lot of that has been overcome. Yes, there's still some problems, but I think the, the car crash... A, um, scenario where if we had a no deal and there would have just been gridlock and nobody was able to trade has been averted so that's good so again we're now expecting the UK to rise from that you look at the UK uh, blue line on the bottom of the graph there we're really really far behind rest of the world over those long periods of time so as Brexit has come to an end a lot of big commentators around the world are saying the UK market is a cheap market to invest into and they'll start buying our companies. We recently spoke to a, a fund manager who manages a large uh, UK stocks and shares fund um, and he'd been explaining to us how the UK stock market, although it does look that it's been the poor performer when you compare it to other markets, is not really that worse in some of the key sectors which you would see on the UK stock market. The main thing to point out, which you can see from this, this table here, and we have stressed this in the past, that all of the major technology companies are, are based, a lot of them, in the US. Uh, we have a very, very small amount of technology companies on our stock market. So if you move past that and you actually compare the UK financial services sector to the US financial services sector as per stock market returns, there's not a lot of difference there. The, the, those two lines you can see there are quite closely correlated. So on the face of it, our UK banks compared to US banks are the same. Again, why does the US have such an advantage when you see the investment returns? It's because of those technology companies. You then look at the US stock market on its own compared to the US stock market sector, uh, if that makes sense. If you were just investing in the technology companies on the US stock market, you would have 27% growth. Um, over the last uh, 12 months. However, if you invest in the US stock market, you're only getting 10% growth over that same period. Again, this just keeps reiterating the point, having a balanced portfolio, spread it across all the major asset classes all over the world, and in the long run, you will get positive returns. So although we have focused on the UK quite a bit in this update, it's because we, we believe that the UK, a couple of expressions we've heard from different commentators is like a cold spring. We've been under-invested into over the last few years as Brexit was a problem that people were worried about. But now as we've come out of that situation, we're way ahead of everyone else with our vaccine rollout. Hopefully this could be the year that the UK investments surge ahead. So thanks for listening again to another Wealth of Advice update. Almost a year since we started doing these um, and hopefully we're now starting to get towards the end um, of the dark winter that we've had and a nice spring into summer and everything will be a whole lot better for everyone.